If there's a company that has the potential to change how you live, how you experience the day-to-day -day physical world, I think that's Ginkgo Bioworks. They currently trade via the SPAC, SRNG, but they'll be going public or de where, where they'll trade as DNA stock shortly in the coming month or two. And so I view Ginkgo Bioworks as an incredible co company with just dramatic potential. Clearly, they're starting to have product market fit. You've seen their revenue grow very quickly, hundreds of percents of ju over just the last few years. So I think they have product market fit. I think they're delivering potentially a revolutionary platform to lead to effectively a revolution in how we experience the physical world in terms of the products around us. And so I'm excited by looking at Ginkgo Bioworks. The only tough part at the end of the day is proving that they can get to scale and proving that the valuation is compelling. Let's talk about all that right now as we dive in. Uh, you know, it's funny, you know, management sort of hints at this, but if there's a company that makes me think we're on the path to someday create super dinosaurs in the future, you know, either recreating or bringing bring about whole new types of dinosaurs, it might as well be Ginkgo Bioworks. And it's a suggestion that they've actually leaned into. Here it is, you know, they're, they're showing pictures of T-Rex toys on, you know, their presentation. And the reality, though, is even if they're able to bring back or create super dinosaurs, the reality is that synthetic biology and what they're tapping into is just so much bigger than just that. It's so much bigger than Jurassic Park, uh, where you're looking at huge changes. Imagine fragrances, things that you've never smelled before, something that smells 5x better than you could, oh man, this just, this makes this food so much more compelling. Or imagine wearing clothes that's softer and cheaper to make, or fertilizers and crop enhancements that make it possible to grow more crops on less land, or animal-free proteins, or different tech that enables, let's say, gene therapies that previously weren't thought possible. And you can see several of the different partners that are working with Gengo Bioworks. And so the way to understand, you know, this sort of revolution is they're trying to program DNA the same way that you can program, let's say, a computer. And so you sync, you sequence and synthesize DNA, four different letters that make up the DNA code. Then you, let's say, insert the DNA into yeast. And this is an example. This is an actual example, a case study that they've done with Kronos, which is a public company, you know, where they've done a deal, you know, effectively to help. Kronos is a cannabis company trying to create new versions of cultured rare cannabinoids. So very specific flavors, very specific outcomes, different types of products. And this is a partnership. And so here it is. They, Kronos is working with them to sequence certain types of DNA, saying, hey, this is what we want. Let's insert this DNA into yeast. And then as you do this, you sort of experiment where you scale up the fermentation to produce cultured cannabinoids. So many different types of versions to say, hey, does this meet what we're looking for? Maybe a very specific taste or very specific, you know, outcome with cannabis product. And so here it is, when you think about the Ginkgo Bioworks platform, it's really this foundation. It's a, a platform and what they're using is incredible software, incredible hardware, incredible robotics, where it's effectively the shotgun approach to see what works, you know, trying many, many, many different iterations to say, oh, okay, this is resulting in this profile. Maybe it's a flavor profile. Maybe it's a scent that delivers on what you were expecting. And here's a quote from a, a, a pharmaceutical CEO saying, Ginkgo is addressing a foundational challenge that enables us to scale our antibody discovery platform. Prior to partnering, we had screened 173 antibodies on our own. Together, we are planning an initial screen of 5,000 antibodies, showing a multi-step you know, change in terms of what they can do using Ginkgo Bioworks platforms and are jointly developing tools to screen tens of thousands at dramatically lower costs. These are key phrases. You're talking about dramatic increase in scale at lower cost. This reminds me of early days of internet, dramatic scale, lower cost. And that's exactly what they're talking about is saying, hey, the unit cost, let's say the cost per, you know, developing a certain type of strain of yeast to, you know, has a certain taste or smell or, you know, out outcome. They're effectively saying, this is multiples cheaper than what you can necessarily do by hand. And they're looking at two orders of magnitude cheaper than by hand, you know, in the in the years ahead. So this is a core low cost platform. That's what they're looking to do. And so as I look at this, you know, I'm trying to understand, okay, there are two core questions here. Is this all pie in the sky? Or do they actually have product market fit? Is this just nice words, you know, nice concepts? Or is there actually a real product that's being delivered on? And okay, if they are actually able to have product market fit, do they actually have a real business model? 
If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no-hype mission-focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. I'm looking for potential multi-baggers, folks, types of stocks that could potentially go up hundreds or even thousands of percent over time. And so as we look at Ginkgo Bioworks to answer these two questions, let's actually start off with the business model. Where to understand the business model at this point, one is effectively the fee-based revenue, access to their platform. They call it foundry-based revenue. They talk about how it's highly predictable revenue stream independent of whether or not a program is successful in terms of developing, let's say using this new you know, genetic code to develop a new physical item. They're effectively saying, hey, we're going to get paid regardless because companies are getting access to our platform and that's part of their R&D budget. But then because there's inherent risk that these companies will be going out of business, they also have this downstream component, whether it's milestone fees, royalty streams, effectively saying, hey, if we help you create something that is revolutionary, we would like a cut of that. We would like a percentage of sales or maybe we would like a percentage of your company, maybe, you know, a few million shares. And that's literally something that they've done. I mentioned Kronos earlier, you know, trying to develop this rare cannabinoid, you know, uh, types of products. And here it is. They just successfully met one of their milestones and they're getting 1.5 million shares. And so this is, you know, these are the different ways of, of monetizing it. One is effectively the R&D budget. Very clear. These are the fees. The other is, OK, if you're successful, let's get this this dramatic payout in the future. The challenge with this business model is while it's very fairly easy to see what your foundry revenues are going to be over time and I'd expect that to continue to grow dramatically. It's really difficult to size up what that downstream value is at any given point. There's a lot of optionality here. So it's tough to say, okay, is this worth 500 million as they're currently talking about? Is it worth a billion, two billion, five billion? This is the question. And honestly, if they're successful with helping their customers longer term, I would expect this number just to balloon significantly over time because all it takes is a few really long tail products that are truly world beating developing a scent or let's say a a lab based protein that all of a sudden is let's say cheaper to make and better for the environment than let's say you know chicken or beef mass production you know you have something like that and you own a few percent of it that could be a game changer for their business model so it's a challenge sizing up this downstream revenue value that said, do they have product market fit? Oftentimes you have companies sort of pitch, you know pitching pie in the sky type of you know projections the reality is, what they're showing now suggests they have very early days product market fit. They have grown their business from around 30 million in revenue, foundry-based revenue in 2018 to around 60 million in 2020. That's expected to get to around 100 million in, in 2021 and continue to grow significantly, effectively 10x in the coming years. And so, yeah, there's significant, I, I would say this, is, this proves that they have product market fit. The fact that they have doubled in the last two years, doubling again effectively in the next year, that's that's suggesting okay you very early days in product market fit the challenge however we'll talk about in one second you know they're they're also beating guidance um where they previously and this is almost unheard of in the spac space uh where they previously said for fiscal 21 they're talking about 150 million in revenue now they're saying it's going to be more than 175 million so beating guidance this is not what you see with most SPAC land and most SPAC land you're talking about oh here's our guidance and then a few weeks later they pull it and the stock just completely plummets this is one of those rare SPACs this is the rare zebra where it's like wow you're actually you know under promise and over deliver and by the way your over deliver is fantastic growth you know more than 100 percent growth that we're looking at in the first half year over year 180 percent growth profile a lot of that was due to this biosecurity you know revenue that they talk about here and that is largely due to this broader k-12 through statewide testing for covid it's part of 400 million dollar plus in in covid testing in contracts you can see the various different states and that they're working with that they're effectively you know doing business with and so that's you know as you think oh okay wait a second and imagine for example if if covid is just let's say one step in the future we might be do lots of different types of testing maybe you're testing water maybe you're testing you know air quality in different areas there's going to be the potential for a lot of different types of tests in the future just in terms of biosecurity and so i think that's a very relevant you know, optionality that one should even consider with this business model. It's not even something that was on my mind, you know, when I, you know, when I first heard about this company and now I'm like, oh, wow, I could definitely see this as a material driver of their business. Uh, and another example that proves that they have product market fit, just a few days ago, they talked about a headline effectively saying, hey, we've created a breakthrough process to create 
the mRNA vaccine therapeutics were effectively their process, their manufacturing approach is more than 10x more efficient than the prior process, addressing core bottlenecks that you currently have with the mRNA vaccine process. So this is like, there are multiple indicators here that this is a company with real product market fit. The challenge, as I, as I alluded to just a second ago, the challenge is really getting to scale is that they're still subscale in terms of revenue, in terms of getting that business model to a place where they actually have, are maybe cash neutral. Significant cash burn now. That's what they're forecasted to do for now and effectively the years into the future. You're looking at effectively a cash burn probably of a billion bucks over the next five years. And that's quite significant relative to the cash balance that they're expected to have even post the closure of this back deal. We'll talk about that in a second. But overall, as you look at this, I'm thinking, yeah, this is a billion dollar cash burn at least over the next five years potentially. Even if even if they're expecting to grow from 150 million in revenue, you know, 175 million plus to let's say 1.1 billion over the next few years. So still dramatic improvement, but they're still expecting huge cash burn. So what about valuation? And here I'm gonna do a quick plug, if you will, where once again, if this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel, you're watching Unrivaled Investing. If you wanna follow my personal journey as I look to find potential multi-baggers, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. First week of the month, I call it my full portfolio. By the end of the month, I call it a potential multi-bagger. And there's also this exclusive community on Discord where I'm interacting with the Unrivaled Nation on a daily basis. So go to unrivaledinvesting.com to check that out. If you're interested, if you enjoy learning about potential multi-baggers, make a point hitting that like button and hit that subscribe button. Let's dive deeper into the setup here as we look at, you know, Ginkgo Bioworks. As we're looking at it, the challenge here, you know, as we think about the valuation is it's effectively priced at $18 billion. This is at the deal price of 10 bucks. It's currently trading slight below, but $18 billion for a company doing around 200 million in revenue, that's gonna be tough. You know, that's 90 times sales. So this is definitely, while they have dramatic potential. It's definitely more of a speculative play, given the fact that they're expecting to have about 2.4 billion in cash on their balance sheet post, you know, the deal closure, which is expected to be in the next month, but they're expected to burn effectively half of that in the next five years. So I would expect future dilution in the years ahead. I personally am very excited about this company. You know, this is the type of company that I would love for it to be part of my portfolio. Just it gives gives me some excitement to think about the direction that humanity has in the years ahead. That said, that 90x revenue multiple, that is gonna be tough to digest in the years ahead. So really what you're banking on is, is more sort of speculative behavior and the hope that people will continue to pay a very high multiple for this company in order for this, let's say, to work as a stock in the years ahead. There's very good, very good chance that their fundamentals continue to, del to, to deliver, especially given the fact that they already beat guidance that they put out for this year or they're beating it and raising it. It. The challenge ultimately is, do you have, you know, you're, you're saying, yeah, you do have product market fit. You do have, you know, you are going to have balance sheet breathing room. So I, I see operationally, like this seems to be working. It seems like you're taking market share or even creating a market. The big challenge as I'm thinking about this is ultimately the valuation compression that you could be facing. And the reality is you don't always have to take, you know, spec bets or speculative bets to potentially have huge returns. You know, I just called out exclusively for the Unrivaled Nation, a company that's growing faster than Ginkgo Biowork, but instead of trading at 90 times sales, it trades at four times sales and it's profitable. And it looks like they'll continue to be profitable in the years ahead. So I look at something like that and I'm like, yeah, you should understand that's the dynamic of the marketplace is that in this marketplace, you know, great companies that everyone knows about can get these incredible multiples like 90 times sales, but sometimes if you turn over enough rocks, you can find these things where it's like, oh wow, here's this company growing 200, 300% and trades at four times sales and is profitable. But I save that exclusively for my journey subscribers as a potential multi-bagger. And so if this video has been helpful for you learning about Ginkgo Bioworks, please make a point of hitting that subscribe button, hitting that thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching.